Hey, howdy, hey, and welcome to EHC TV. If you're seeing me right now, then obviously you're watching our sports interview on EHC TV, but you could be listening to WEHC 90.7. And whether you're hearing or seeing us right now, we're glad you're tuned in. Today our guest is Don Montgomery, the head football coach for Emory & Henry College. How are you doing, Coach? Thank you, Cole. I'm very doing very well. First thing I want to talk about, you all had an incredible comeback just in this last week against Shenandoah. Would you mind going through the story of that game for us and explaining to us how you felt throughout that entire situation? Well, um, first of all, Shenandoah was a 1-7 in seven football team coming in, but they didn't have 1-7 in seven talent. Um, they've, uh, for whatever reason, they've not had very much luck this year. And I knew that uh, their skilled players and their defense and their offensive line was huge. And I couldn't figure out by watching them on film why they were one and seven. But they did some little things during the game that showed you why and um, you know, missed some coverages and um, couldn't put us away. And uh, so th th if you start out with the game, um, our first play from scrimmage, our, our guys were all keyed up and Joe Vaughn breaks a 67 yard touchdown run and he had some significantly good blocking along the way and was very determined to get to the end zone and it was, a, it was one of the best plays that we had all year. And then coming off the field, um, being that I've been in coaching 36 years, the first thing I said to the offense is, hey, this game's not over. It's far from over. That's just one play. And what you have to do is you have to play to your max because oftentimes what happens is whenever you score like that on the first kickoff or the first play of the game, you have a huge letdown mentally. And that's what happened in the first half for us. Our offense tended to relax. Thank God our defense didn't. And uh, as they relaxed, uh, we had two turnovers and three penalties that, you know, we stopped ourselves. And that's been happening kind of throughout the year in the first half where, you know, if we start things go good, our, our kids get a little bit more relaxed. And then, you know, that's when the penalties and the turnovers occur. Um, Second half, after we went in at halftime and had a prayer meeting, um, we uh, went out and, again, played some pretty good defense, but we kind of faltered on offense trying to get the momentum back again. And then uh, what usually sparks our offense is a big play. Um, so, you know, uh, we, went, we did a freeze play on uh, first down against uh, in, going into the fourth quarter. We did a freeze play, which means the quarterback comes up, he calls the signal, and gets the calls for the snap count, and um, their, their defense jumped across the line of scrimmage, and we threw a deep pass to Davon. It was a free play because, you know, they, they jumped off sides. So, you know, and that was the first thing. Then the next play went to Lu Lucas Kirby over the middle, and then the third play went into the end zone. And the one thing about being in this offense is it's got its pluses and its minuses. Its pluses is we can score anytime quickly, and the minuses is are if, you have a, if you're inaccurate or you don't play well, then what happens is that, you know, your defense is right back on the field. And, and right. if, you, if you look at that, uh, Catholic had 81 play or Shenandoah had 81 plays and we had 52. And that's really uncharacteristic for our team. But it was because we couldn't stop them running the football. And they were so huge. So um, and, and as, as time goes on, our offense and our defense feed off of each other. So when we scored that quickly, our defense went back onto the field and got us a three and out. And the second play from scrimmage, Corey Ware catches a 67-yard touchdown pass, which was just a three-step slant, and they missed a tackle, and he took it to the house. So, you know, um, our guys, for some strange reason, have a lot of confidence when they go into that fourth quarter. We've outscored our opponents in the fourth quarter a lot. So that's, that's the recap of the game. I'm proud of my team. Absolutely. And I would I'd say you're talking about Coming back in the fourth quarter, we're kind of getting used to this thing at Emory and Henry, frankly. We had just the other day um, at Catholic or against Catholic during homecoming, we had a similar situation where we came back when we were down by seven. Um, why is it so important, do you think, and how do you think Emory and Henry has developed into a comeback team in the fourth quarter? I, I, it's, it's the kids. They have a uh, never say die attitude ever since uh, the first year that I've been here. Um, they're tougher than than the normal kid. They're, they keep focused. They keep their nose to the grindstone. They take direction. Um, I, I give all the credit to them. I, I just think that, you know, uh, they've got that, they, they just got that inner 
confidence, and they feel like if it's close in the fourth quarter, they're going to win. So, Another thing you were saying, you were talking about how um, during halftime you all had a prayer meeting as a team, and I know that you do a lot of work with FCA on campus, and um, I'd like to know what's so important about FCA. What do you think the kids get out of it, and what do you get out of it that makes it so important to you? Well, I found Jesus Christ through football and my football coach. And it's, uh, it's really important for you to understand that one of my roles as a football coach here is to be a leader spiritually as well. And um, if, I, you know, if somebody told me that I couldn't do that, I'd resign. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's really important uh, not only that we're good role models as coaches, but that we try to build men through the opportunity that we have as a, a football team and as football coaches. Because the same principles apply whether you're on the football field or in life. You're going to have to handle adversity. You can't make excuses. You have to be accountable and responsible for everything you do. And there's a higher up power that really gives you some peace of mind whenever you're, you're headed into truff, you know, trouble. And I, I can just tell you that um, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for uh, God in my life, I wouldn't, you know, I'd wilt. So it's, uh, um, there's, there's no doubt in my mind about the importance of FCA and the importance of giving leadership to kids in that area. Absolutely. So if you had to boil your coaching strategy down into, say, one sentence or just a word or two, what is the most important thing that you hope to do as a coach here? Build men, uh, get them to graduate, and to take advantage of the opportunities that they've created for themselves through the four years here, and to have some fun coaching football and to allow them to have fun and to be able to experience success. But whenever you're not successful in society's eyes, but to understand that you know um, there's more than just what society views as successful. You know, when you know you've done your best and you've uh, you have some peace of mind whether you're national champs or you, you haven't won a game. I think it's important for you to know that you've done your best. That seems like a great strategy to me, Coach. We appreciate having you on the show. So thank you for coming in today. I appreciate being on the show. Thank you. And you've been listening to the sports interview from Emory & Henry Reports on EHC-TV. You can find us on Comcast Cable channels 70 and 95 on Wednesday and Thursday nights at 7. Thanks for joining me, Cole Conley, for this sports interview.